guys, it's Ruthie with the Popo Backyard Farm. Today we are going to talk about ribbons and cards in Bible journaling. Now, let me start off by saying this. If you want to start Bible journaling, you don't have to have a billion dollars. Don't go to the thrift store, pick up a Bible. Um, when people send you stuff at Christmas time and throughout the year, save those little cards and things like that. And I'll show you what I do with them. Okay. Now, sometimes I'll take a card and I'll put it in the middle of my Bible like this. And then I might write notes on the other side. This is just some of my artwork. And you don't have to be great artists. Some people are wonderful and I love looking at their art. But my goal is to read the Bible. Not that their goal isn't to read the Bible. I'm sure it is. It's just that, let's face it, some people are just really phenomenal. And I hope someday, and you can pray for me that I am too. And, you know, every day you work on your art, you're going to get a little better, right? So sometimes I'll take a card and I'll like tape it inside and then I'll turn it into like a pocket. Now, I didn't want to glue this one all the way over. So this way I can still read the passage. Today, too, I'll just let you know that when I read the book of Acts, I get so excited. I mean, how can you not be filled with joy? So there you go. Yay! I took some ribbon instead of making it a bookmarker. I just put this beautiful festive bookmarker taped it on the side and wrote joy you know when you read about how the early church started and all the joy I mean it was like they were so happy and even though there was persecution going on they were just joyful you will just love reading the book of Acts if you've never read it you are gonna have a great time reading it you're just gonna love all the miracles and the things that happen now with that, I want to tell you something I learned this week. I felt like I learned this week. Um, and I think I read it in the Amplified Bible. So you can check the notes there. But I thought, I've never heard anybody say this, and I thought it was really interesting. And you can let me know your thoughts below. You know how in Genesis it says to Adam and Eve that uh, he that if they ate from the tree of knowledge of good and evil that death was going to come well think about this adam and eve when they were first created they were created in god's image and so what happened was they had never seen death you know there was a decay and all that stuff so now they ate from the fruit and flowers would die Everything was decaying. Their body was decaying because death had entered. The whole world was dying in a sense. And that I thought was extremely interesting because I thought that is, you know, and something it said in the Amplified about decay came in and I thought, think about it. All the decay that started, you know, so you know, like if you go and you're around Jesus, he's full of life. And so all of a sudden, everything was decaying. My plant would start to die off after a while. You know what I mean? You know, maybe this one probably, plants live for a long, long time. But I mean, death had entered the world. And so everything was decaying, including us. And you know, the Bible says, though the outward man perishes, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. So, you know, if you accepted Jesus into your heart and you know you're building up that spirit man your outside body may start to get old and wrinkly but that inward man is renewed and of course you can pray and try to live close to the Lord and ask that you can be like some of the saints that you know that they they regain their strength and all that but you know it's more of less of me and more of him so I always pray when I read my Bible, I ask the Holy Spirit to reveal his word to me, to open up his word to me, to teach me, to instruct me, and uh, to help me as I read and, of course, you know, listen to different pastors. There's so much available online and offline to help you. And uh, so, you know, take the time to, you know, to read and pray and ask the Holy Spirit to teach you. Now, the Bible, just so you know that it's kind of like a puzzle. All the pieces go together. So if you find one scripture and say, oh, you know, you, you know, make a teaching out of it, you can't really do that. It all has to fit together. So when you find a scripture and just like that decay thing, um, you want to make sure it coincides with everything else in the Bible. 
because you want to rightly divide the word of truth. You want to be able to interpret the Bible, the truth, like the belt of truth in Ephesians 6. It talks about putting on the belt of truth. You don't want it to be like, that's my interpretation. No, two plus two equals four. If your interpretation that it's different, you need to rethink that. So scripture agrees with other scripture and then, of course, you can ask, you know, people like, I always say, you'll hear me say this, the Baptist, the Assembly of God, because those are two of my resources, that, my personal suggestions. Like, if you have a question, you know, ask your pastor, send an email to your Sunday school teacher or, and say, what do you think? Am I hitting the mark? I mean, sometimes I'll talk to some of my Christian friends and we're like, what do you think about this in Revelation? Or what do you think about that? And so... I think it's good to always have like like other Christians that when you have an idea or thought, you can ask what they think. So that was the thought I had the other day. So I thought, it said that in the Amplified and got me thinking. I said, yeah, decay came in and that's what it said in the Amplified. And so whenever you get a scripture, like I said, uh, it's like everything kind of goes together. Another pastor or ministry I like is Chuck Misler. I don't know if you've ever heard of him. He has a lot of interesting things that he says. And, and I like what he always says. He always says, don't take my word for it. Go through and study for yourself and make sure. Because like the Bible talks about, and I think they talk about them in the book of Acts, which was where I was reading this morning, that it talks about um, the Bereans were better Christians, so to speak, than others because they would hear them preach and then they'd go home to make sure the preacher wasn't off and was teaching them the truth. So, but anyway, this is uh, my uh, work. I use crayons. I use markers. I cut pictures. Um, there's nothing wrong with buying stickers and all that for your Bible. If you have all that stuff, go ahead and use it. I have all kinds of different things. I love this. This is one of my favorite things in my Bible. <laughs> This is where Paul got shipwrecked in Acts, and I have a the ship in here, isn't it cool? But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this, and uh, just remember that Jesus loves you, and if you have never accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, and that's something you want to do, today's a great day for that, and uh, you can pray this prayer with me. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I ask that Jesus would come into my heart. And be the Lord, the boss man of my life. Forgive me for anything that I've done wrong to offend you. And lead me and guide me in my life. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Now, if you are looking for some Christian buddies, I mean, I love my Christian buddies. All I can tell you is for me, I suggest just going into Google or something and look up your area for a Baptist or Assembly of God church and uh, hook up with some churches there. You know, go to three or four, find the right fat, the one that feels that you belong there. And, uh, you know, I think that's a great, great way to grow your faith and uh, have some Christian friends and all that type of thing. Okay, guys. So with that, remember, big or small, you too can be a backyard farm. God bless.